Hello everyone, how are you today? It is Sharon here from iRestore Stuff, that's my blog, and but I'm here on, as an ambassador for Essential Stencil today to show you some DIY projects that you can do. So if you are joining me uh, on the replay, if you're joining the replay, just comment the word replay and you've got a chance to win some prizes within 24 hours after our live has finished. So. But if you're joining me live here, say hello, let me know where you're tuning in from. Hi Bronwyn, how are you today? Let me just see if I can find our live here. I wanted to show you something fun today. Uh, we're going to be doing some, one of the, I don't know if you saw the description of the live. Does that pop up for you when, when we go live? Do you see that description or do you just, does it just uh, show straight away the live? I haven't kind of noticed that. Hey Maggie, how are you? Dawn's here, Elisa's here. <coughs> Just refreshing my feed here on the laptop and now I can see comments coming through on there. Yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of boards here. This one's, um, I did put the size in the description. I think it's like, let me just check, 16 by 14 inches. Yeah, about 16 by 14 and a half inches. That's the large board that we're doing today because here's something fun that I haven't done yet. So we're going to be using this, like there's a Holstein and a Highlander cow in this transfer pack. I don't know who's got these. Has anyone got some of these? Finally spring in California. Who was that? I couldn't see who that was. Hi Ella. Hi Gina. Yes, you can see the description. Oh, that's awesome. So if you can't, the links are right there in the description of the live. You can use my code, I restore stuff, get 10% off any of the essential stencils on the site, like the whole site. Uh, we're going to be using cow print pattern today. I may or may not use some transfer, some fun transfer florals. I was thinking of putting a floral up on top of the cow. Um, maybe a farmhouse sign as well. So I do have this other little sign board. So stay tuned and you don't want to miss out on the prize giveaway at the end of our prize. Also wanted to talk to you about, I don't know if any of you have seen, the April stencils that have just come out. So this is another small board that I might get to. May or may not get to. So it's similar size. It could be a little matching set to this because we'll do something farmhousey with that as well. All right, we're going to be um, working on this. Just wanted to point to my screen at the back here because I have put up here for you the new April collection, which is now live uh, on the website. And you don't have to pre-order these. These are good to go. So you may not be able to see that on my screen, but I've got a link there and you can go straight to the home page. They have got some beautiful collections here for Mother's Day, all sorts of things. So uh, you may have gotten the email to say that Essential Stencil has these live. Um, we've got some beautiful scripture verses there, some really beautiful, beautiful stencils as usual. Look, cute nursery safari animals right here. I don't know if you can see that one um, here. Gorgeous. Now, there is a bundle. Oh, we've also got, I can't wait to use these patterns. All right, we've got the olive branch pattern and then this, it's a rattan, a rattan lace kind of pattern. Wouldn't that be great on furniture? Sharon, you ordered the new collection this morning. There is a bundle. So let me point to this bundle here. The bundle actually saves you 11% if you purchase the whole entire bundle. So have a look through there. If you think that you may even use three quarters of those, it might be great to get the bundle because you save 11% just by getting the bundle. Then you use my code, I restore stuff, and you save a further 10%. So I restore stuff in the little code area or just use my link right there in the description of the live. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to point those out to you. What other fun ones did you see there? These numbers, words and numbers, mini sign stencil. Um, the children arise and call her blessed. That's a gorgeous verse for uh, Mother's Day, isn't it? This beautiful open book with flowers stencil. And I can imagine on this book that you could probably put some more stenciled words on that or even put mum's initials. Beautiful ideas for Mother's Day. So, and home sweet classroom, great teacher gifts coming on there. A swan princess stein, sign stencil. So many fun ideas. All right, so that is the April collection. And um, anyway, let's get started. So if you haven't taken advantage of that, yes, 
you can use my code I restore stuff, grab a hold of the bundles. So let's point the camera down and get started on a project today because we're going to be staining this board. I was tossing over whether to do a stain or to use some kind of a um, just a solid paint color. We're going to be putting this transfer, this gorgeous, I keep wanting to call it Holstein. It's the Highland cow. I think it's beautiful. And the Holstein cow looks like this. So if you don't have these transfers yet, these are a once off. The stencils you can use over and over again, but these are literal transfers. You are transferring the image completely onto the board. So I'm going to be using Fusion Mineral Paints Coal Black, and I do have an affiliate link for Fusion Paint. If you do want that, just comment in the comments that you'd like the Fusion link, please, and I will make sure we get that to you or pop it up there. Um, what I'm going to do is use a brush. Here it is. I'll probably put this sideways for now, although my cow is going to go this way. And then we're going to add some words as well. And I want to do something fun with the cow print pattern on this later. So let me just point this. Uh, I go over to him. I just scream so I can see your comments. There we go. Hi, Dana. How are you? Dorothy's here from Arizona. Um, so many people on today. Tell your friends. Make sure you hit that little share button and we can um, let others know that we're live today. All right, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of water. I'm using my coffee steamer mug because I just had to grab something on hand. So for a little bit of water, oh, that is probably a little too much. I just want a, the tiniest bit of water to water down. I'm being indecisive here because you really don't need a lot to create a bit of a wash look. But I do want it sort of darker because I want to do the words that I'm going to do at the end in white. So what I will do is just dip my brush into this paint, the fusion paint in coal black. I've got quite a bit of a dollop on there. And then I'm just adding it to this water, swishing it around. And we're going to see if that might be enough to paint this entire board in this stain. And if it's not enough, if it's uh, if I still can't see the grain of the wood through it, I mean, if I can still see too much of it and I want a more solid coverage, then I can always add more at the end. So I will wipe that off. It sort of looks a bit greyish because we've added water to this, which is really a true black, a pure black called coal black. Um, of course, with stenciling, you can use any acrylic based paints and just, they will, um, as long as they're really a good quality, you don't want some, you know, kitty paints that are a bit watered down. So as long as they're a good quality, yeah, I can still see the wood grain through there and I've watered it down a bit. I may need some more of this. Looks like it's soaking right in. Usually because this is a plywood, see, it's just, um, I think. I think it's a nine millimeter ply. Not sure what that is in inches, but that's what it said on the back of the board. Um, yeah, we could even sand that off a bit. Oh, no, I'm not going to have enough. So I will have to dip my brush back in. Now, if it was, um, <laughs> if I was to do this again, or if you were, you know, doing a really serious, like a whole piece of furniture or something, I would write down your ratio because I didn't I'm just gonna to have to do a good old guess I think I'll put an extra bit of water in this time and add a little bit more paint to my brush um, yeah write your ratios down especially also that goes for if you're mixing paint colors because you know you've if you've got two uh, water-based paint colors you know from the same brand or whatever you can mix those colors together and create some beautiful, um, some more beautiful colors. Just adding a bit more paint in there because um, my guess is that I had a bit more paint in the ratio that I used first up. So we're just creating a wash. And for this purpose, yeah, usually Fusion Mineral Paint does have really good coverage. I think I've used the black for the base for last week. And usually one or two coats is plenty for that to go on. So you can start to see, you can see that wood grain through there, but we may even do a bit of sanding back. 
yes you can water it down for a stained look now if you are doing this on a piece of furniture signs don't matter so much because they're just going to be sitting on the wall but if you're creating a wash for a piece of furniture say a white wash you can do this with any color by the way uh, then I would seal it at the end because you're compromising um, the finish fusion mineral paint has a natural built-in top coat finish but when you water down the paint you're kind of you're compromising that quality of that built-in top coat that it would have as a solid paint because we've created a wash then I would recommend after your project is finished to seal it with um, something like their Fusions Matte Tough Coat Sealer okay so that's their um, you can that comes in a matte or a gloss but that's if you're creating some kind of a um, wash on furniture you want to make sure that's nicely sealed and not a porous finish so because we're doing it on raw plywood this is soaking really well into the finish now I won't go around and do all of the edges right now I possibly will create a little frame for this at some stage later on but we won't be doing that on the live today so uh, with plywood also I feel like uh, the water the high water content of the wash will sometimes warp your board a little bit so you may have to depending on the thickness or thinness but if you've got a solid board not a plywood board it may not be um, it may not do that as much all right I think I'm finished with that coverage right now you can see some of the grain in the wood there so see how we've just created a nice wash I'll just pop that in my water to dry off and I'll hit this with the dryer um, yes Pat so all fusion paint has a top coat finish it has like a built-in top coat so it's different it's a mineral paint so it's different than chalk paint that's one of your main differences between a chalk paint and your uh, mineral paints in the furniture paint types and that that is that chalk paint is more of a porous finish where you really need a sealer uh, to seal that top coat you know with a wax or a, a sealer or an oil based finish you can do that but the mineral paint if used straight as a solid paint does have that built-in protection of a top coat and a lot of people if it's on a hard wearing piece of furniture like your tabletops or kitchen cabinets or a chair for example um, they will still want to put that top coat sealer over the top of your solid fusion mineral paint you can do that as well just for added extra protection I love seeing the grain of the wood too yeah it's great so let's have a look at that I like it we could go a little bit more um, textured and just get a bit of uh, sandpaper let's see just tear a bit of sandpaper off and just kind of give it a rough sanding <clears throat> yeah Cindy's saying you found with the regular acrylics that when you add water to make a stain it raises the grain of the wood usually needs a light sanding yeah um, that still happens too with most paints I'm feeling this now and it doesn't feel like I'm still feeling it's a little damp in some areas so the hairdryer has hit it a little bit I'm just going to test an area see if I can get a little bit more of grain but because it's plywood it's not like a nice oak grain it's just kind of a bit varied so I'm not sure that this idea would work so well but just giving that a go to see if it's just removing a little bit of the paint mm, I'm not sure that it matters too much all right well I'm going to set that aside and we're going to pop this beautiful Thailand cow on there but let me show you another project that I have that's sort of on the go at the beginning of our live I showed you some of the April stencils that have just been released they're live on the site ready to go so let me know if you've already placed your order there are some gorgeous ones there for Mother's Day it does come in a bundle 
If you purchase the whole bundle, it'll save you 11% there, but an additional, on top of that, you can get an extra 10% using my code there. So I want to do a background on this sign. All right, so this one, I used the, a white paint, so I've used Fusion's white paint Victorian lace, and I have watered that down, and I've already done the whitewash on this. So this is the original look. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit oranger, orangier, <laughs> or a little bit more yellow. And then I've added a whitewash to the front of this so that it kind of lends to that whitewashy look. I want to use a bit of a subtle cow print pattern to the back. And this one I've popped the name of all of the stencils plus that general link in the description of the live so that you can see. This is just a single stencil that you can order. And you can order this along with any of those new April stencils. Use the same code, I restore stuff. Any of the ones I'm using today, you can just add them into your order if you wanted them, if you don't have them at home already. So those of you doing a lot of sign making, yes, Kim, you got the bundle after midnight last night. Amazing. Some people stay up till midnight to those go live. Yeah, because I'm not sure uh, what essential stencil might do if the if there's one stencil set that runs out that that affects the bundle count. So I would grab a hold of those bundles while you can, because I think if um, if there's one stencil that runs out, that will affect the bundle bun av availability of that bundle. So if you do want to grab a hold of the bundle, I think it might only be just this week that that's available as a bundle. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to use Fusions Black again, but I don't want this to stand out. Um, I don't want it to be like huge contrast. So I may even use, wow, we've still got this stain. So maybe I'll just use a little bit of this stain, but using a stencil brush, I'll use one of my large ones. So you can also use my code, I restore stuff on the brushes. So Essential Stencil has a set of four stencil brushes of different sizes. There's half, five, eight, three quarter, seven, eight inch brushes. I'm going to use the large one because this is quite a large pattern. So um, with some of the very fine, smaller lettering and that kind of thing, I'll use the smaller one. Um, Mm. Yes, I, Rhonda, thank you. Yes, I'm wondering if Essential Stencil can just confirm that it's only this week for the special price on the bundle. I did see something about that, but I sometimes I get lots of information and I forget to remember it in my head. <laughs> so if Essential Stencil can be helpful and let us know that, that would be great. Um, okay, so I'm going to place that, instead of placing it sort of you know, at the edge, I've got some gaps here. I'm just going to stick it straight across the middle because it just hits the ends here where you won't see some of those cow prints, but that's okay. And I, I want it to try and be, I want it to just be a little bit subtle. Yeah, lots of people commenting on the brushes. So let me just have a look here on my, yeah. Let me have a look on the website that I have open right now. Um, it does say this week only at the top, but I'm, yeah. You will have to double check with Essential, or maybe that's just their code. Anyway, yes, the brushes are really good. All right, I'm just gonna use this stain that I've, that I've created earlier, but I haven't done this very often, is actually stenciled with stain. I usually stencil with a really solid colour. But because I want this to be very subtle, yeah, this is going to take a lot to kind of offload and rub off this, this black colour. I'm offloading a lot of that off the brush. If you're new to stenciling, that's what I'm doing here because I just want super subtle. I want it in the background because I'm going to be putting words across the top of it. So let's see how we go with just that amount on. And I'm just going to have to hold this. I would use some painter's tape, but there's really no edges to tape it to. Uh, so I will have to 
just what I can do is put this board because it's the same size lie that across the edge here and that'll stop it from bending over and creating a, um, a bend in the stencil at least for that side anyway all right let's see if I've still got some on my brush okay we do we've just got a little bit on the brush and I do want just subtle so see what subtle looks like because you know we can always add more and we've got a whitewashed background and now we're sort of using that stain wash that I used for this board here which I've really heavily off, um, heavily offloaded <laughs> that doesn't, I don't know it sounds contradicting but um, I've offloaded a lot of the brush and I just want a really subtle look let's have a little look oh it it still turns out quite quite um, not so subtle doesn't it I wonder if I've got hardly anything on my brush now I wonder how much you can see that so you can still see it um, just and that's all I wanted was just okay just a tiny little dip in there again now oh do a tiny dip and it uh, runs everywhere on me I'm using all of my offloading cardboard you can offload on anything paper plate uh, yeah essential stencils just letting you know you can only use one coupon code so um, you can use my code I restore stuff for the April stencils okay so I just add a little bit more well it is a lot I do kind of just want a bit of a subtle subtle theme going on here but sometimes um, my stencil brush isn't really listening to me <laughs> I wanted subtle and it is it is subtle more subtle than a solid solid coverage so I think it'll be fine I'm really not pushing very hard on the brush either so if you do want um, just a shadow there we go see that's why we have tape often because it moves holding it down Nearly as tight as you can hold it with that left hand now I'm starting to push a little bit harder on the brush only because I'm running out of paint on the brush so um, you get a feel for it and I always tell people practice on a piece of cardstock or a scrap piece of wood even just to get your stenciling technique to a fine art well at least to where you confident and you know that it's not going to be see there's a big blotchy part here but that's okay you can always send that off there you go so that's the the subtle cow print look for a background for my sign here and you can see that some parts are a bit more solid than others and this one I actually just went around the edge of that stencil and you can see there's a little shadowy look in the in the beginning so there's just a nice background idea for a sign in creating that subtle look now I can get that sandpaper and just gently take a bit off I could do that all over but because this one was I feel like it's standing out you don't want him to stand out too much so I might do that all over but especially on those ones that are a little bit more standing out and that just removes a little bit from the edge um, from the surface there is a little uh, a dark shadow in the grain of the wood which is also making that one pop out a bit more too but once we get the words on there for our stencil sign I don't think it will matter I think it'll be just fine the lights reflecting on there so 
there you go with that we'll come back to that one I think we're ready to put our cow on here so I set that one aside <coughs> now I've got some it's really quite rough this grain on this wood um, I think I might have the grain sort of it does have a bit of a direction Essential Stencil has just popped the cow print pattern up there, the link for that one. Okay, we are using our Highland cow, which I think just has the cutest bangs. So funny, we don't say bangs in Australia. I'm from Australia, if you couldn't tell my accent. We don't say bangs. We call this your fringe. So when on your hair, if you've got a fringe, that's what that is. I know you guys call them bangs. Well, I suppose, you know, just like fringe on a on an outfit or a cowgirl shirt or something, you know, fringe is that same look on your hair, so on your hairline. All right, so with our transfers, I've got my handy transfer tool, which you can get these um, on the Essential Sensor website <coughs> as well. Excuse me. <coughs> All right, I want to <clears throat> figure out the placement. The other sign that I'm going to be using is this one here, and it's called Left the Gate Open, and there's a farmhouse sign on in the set as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, it's got some little tickle in my throat. <clears throat> yes, you can use my code. I restore stuff for any of these things, the brushes, the, the transfers, and this one. So I'm going to use this farmhouse sign and pop that on my on my cow print in a minute. And this one I want to sort of lay across here. So that's why I went with a dark dark background. We've got the darker cow. So um, <clears throat> the cow will still stand out, but um, we're going to have this in white. So yes, you can stencil over the top of transfer if you've got a nice, good quality paint so we'll be doing that with the fusion paint let's take remove the white backing so see there's a clear which has the print on it and then there's a white backing with nothing on it so we're just going to remove the the print from <coughs> oh see a little spot that went missing I don't think you'll notice okay so now we have to place it exactly where we want it because uh, once you place it down, you sort of, you've got to not move it. All right, so I'm finding centre. You could get your measuring tools out, measure it exact, but now that I've got that down, I'm just pressing it firmly with my hands and using this tool, whoop, probably better to go from the center outwards okay so I'll do that as an example for you moving it out and then once I feel like I've got it sort of stuck to the surface then we want to make sure that we've got it down really solid and depending on your surface um, sort of depends on how easily it, it comes up. Can you see that there? Let me just turn it down a little more. <coughs> Some of these really larger transfers. Oh, there's so many beautiful transfers, isn't there? Who has, who has not tried the transfers before? Also, if you're new to stenciling, let us know here too. Um, the smaller ones obviously are a lot quicker, but we're going to go with the large one today and hopefully it, it removes fairly quickly. If you can start to see some of those little bits lifting up, then we just place it back down and see this one's still not stuck down here. Now someone, I just briefly saw a comment, someone asking, do you have to put a um, sealer or something over the transfers? 
look, I'm hoping that my board hasn't gotten wet and still wet because I feel like if there's any wet areas, I should have let it dry better first. <laughs> I feel like if there's any wet areas, it's going to not lift as well. See, this side is lifting nicely. So maybe we'll start here. Ah. Should have hit that with the dryer again. So this side's coming out nicely. Um, yes, so the answer, I don't think I answered my, the question. Someone said, do you need to seal the transfers on the signs afterwards? You can. I think it would add extra protection. But if they're just going to sit on the wall, they really will just stay there. Um, but often, so I will be sealing this because of the reasons I gave earlier with uh, using that paint as a wash. I want to just give it a nice seal so that it's all protected, even though it is just going to sit on someone's wall. Oh, it looks like we're moving around the cow to the head. You found that using a heat tool on the transfers helps. Casey, thank you. I was just about to pick up my hairdryer and give that a go. So if I get to some tough sticking bits. So as you go, you can kind of just see. So the transfer just literally blends into the background that you've created, whatever it is. So you can put these over the top of stenciled words. You, not that you would want to, but there are certain transfers that I've done before that you can put over the top or underneath your stencils. So mix and match for some great variety. <coughs> Let's see. I'm going to hit this with the hairdryer and see how we go. Might do this in sections. See if that makes a difference. A little bit maybe. That ruffling of the <laughs> rustling of the plastic. Oh, there's a courier at the door. Sorry. I think he'll just leave it there. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm not alive. I can't come and get the package. <clears throat> yeah, there's um this little horn. See it's stuck and I think that what's happened is that paint is not quite dry right there. So there's a big lesson learned, guys. I wonder if I can dry that. dry the paint under. I may have an issue here if, I, if that's not going to be removed. Oh my goodness. Let's pray it stays down. Oh, there we go. It's worked. It's worked, y'all. <clears throat> uh, Sharon's just jumped on. Do you need to paint or seal the board before putting the print down? I've painted it with a wash. But as we were just discussing, it does need to be dry. And because I watered down my, my wash, my paint, it does feel a little like um, the transfer is resisting lying down on wet paint. Which makes sense, doesn't it? So if we feel that, I think we're going to go a little faster now because we've got the main edges are up. Just using a little bit of hairdryer, just experimenting with that. And I feel like that is doing something. We're going a little faster. Um, we've been also talking about Uh, the new April collection that's just dropped last night, midnight last night, from Essential Stencil. And we've been sharing about that and the fun Mother's Day ideas on there, beautiful scripture verses. Um, I think there's some things there, like a teacher stencil, nursery safari animals. That, they look absolutely cute. Okay, this is going great. 
so far so good guys we're it's okay i think we're we're gonna be okay <laughs> Has anyone ordered? <clears throat> From this April collection. I kind of knew when I went to do this live, I'm like, mm, this transfer could take a, take a while, but it's gonna look great. And we can chat while we're doing it. If you've got any other questions about stenciling or about transfers. So far we have done the cow print stencil as a background so if you missed that part there's a beautiful black and white cow print you could do brown and white cow prints too right yes and these uh, transfer tools are now sold separately so you can get those separate going really slowly here as to not pull up i feel like it's pulling up causing a few little wrinkles. Oh, look at that, they just smooth out. So if you do see that it is looking a little wrinkly, they will smooth out. I'm just gonna go pull that really subtly. Oh, really slowly until you see that those little wrinkles I can see. I'm just gonna smooth those out as we go. How are we going? Isn't that the most adorable watercolour image though? Makes your um, signs really stand out beautifully. You can add transfers. I did a, um, sunflower transfers on a hat. So you can add them to fabric. And on my hat, I actually sealed the transfer with a, um, with a, like a, with Fusion's Tough Coat Sealer actually. Um, just over the transfer part. You don't want to put it too much on the fabric part because it kind of makes your fabric look, you know, hard and stiff in that area. So, <clears throat> um, but I did do it on a cap, on a ponytail cap. So you could try it on fabric and see. I want to experiment to see how it goes through the wash though. Uh, and, but I haven't done that yet. So if you've done that, let me know if you've done it on fabric and if you, oh look, we're going faster now, guys. Here we go. Let me see. <clears throat> yeah, it does look great on the stained board. I like it. Looking good. It is. The cow is worth the time to rub this transfer on. We're getting there. Look at her. I feel like it, it is okay, but it, you know, I just hesitate to just go rip <laughs> too fast because I just don't want any tearing of the print. So here we go. And ah, one little tiny piece. There we go, done. So now it's all clean. You can tell that you've done a good job if there's no little bits or chunks left on the plastic. Okay, so there's our gorgeous cow. Now it looks like we've just done a gorgeous painting, watercolour painting of this cow. And once we get a sealer over the top of that, the only parts you can see is really clear edging just right around the edge. But I think that when we get a sealer onto the top, you won't even see that. That's all you can see. All right, so now we want to pop this right here across because I think that looks cute. But I was thinking of adding some. Well, you know, guys, I'm losing track. Where are we up to? Oh, we've got time. Um, I want to add that. I also want to do my farmhouse sign. I'll show you, for those of you who missed out on <coughs> seeing me do this earlier, just added some subtle cow print to here. And I'm going to use a, a red to go over this. I feel like a you could use white. A nice uh, barney kind of red. There's a colour called Highlander. Since we're doing a Highland cow, I thought, you know, That'd be fun. <coughs> so <coughs> let's take a look. Got some more um, cardboard on the back here. I can use as my offloading. I will use some painter's tape for this one. 
Should I put flowers in the cow's hair? That's my next question, guys. I found a couple. I didn't even look to see if these are available, but if you've got transfers, you just type in transfers in essential stencils um, in there. See, look, what about that? In the search bar on essential stencil site, type in transfers, you'll see all of the ones that are available right now. And these spring peonies, what about that? These ones might work better because it's a little bit smaller and it doesn't kind of take over <coughs> the cow. Let me know what you think in the comments. We've got no flowers, peonies, or spring, I don't know what you call them, spring flowers. Let me know what you think before I get to that part of our demo. <coughs> oh, thank you. Someone said I did great on the transfer. Okay, well, thank you. Um, okay, we've got no flowers. Peonies, spring flowers, I like the peonies, spring flowers, no flowers, both look good. <laughs> spring flowers, spring flowers. You like the reddish colour on the cow print? I do too, I think that looks great. That sort of, I feel like that this one has got sort of reddish tones, I could even use a bit of that. Spring flowers, pink flowers, the peonies. Gosh, you guys. I can't tell which one's winning. But I think we've got to put some flowers on there because um, I think I saw an option of both. I feel like the peonies are winning. This, these guys are winning so far. <coughs> could even sort of tip it on its side like so. All right, so this is the color Highlander. I feel like there's a little bit of this in here too. We could just use our... Um, what do you call them? These little tiny brushes, edge bridging brushes, um, to sort of create a bit more red in that. Okay, using uh, just a smaller brush for this one, I will go with the half inch brush, and I've got some in the lid here. Just need a tiny bit on your brush and then offloading it on my cardboard here. Might need a little more just for, sometimes I like to add a bit more just to make it more solid. The red would be nice if using red on the cow print. Yeah, that would be fun too. Okay, we want this to stand out over the cow print and over the whitewash that I've done in the background. So. On the background of this, if you missed it earlier in the live, we've done <coughs> a whitewash on the very background and then using a the same black wash that we used for this, I've just created a subtle cow print stencil behind the word farmhouse that I'm doing now with this. I feel like it's a little bit of a barn or schoolhouse red, a barn red kind of look. Now it's a nice solid coverage there because I have um, offloaded as much as I can off the brush. If you're brand new to stenciling, let us know in the comments. You know we give prizes at the end of our, our lives here, so there's a, a clue. Oh, someone had just asked if you have red barns in Australia. No, we don't actually. Um, it's a very American farming thing. Uh, Someone says they like red, red for the roots, red roses, like the red. What was I saying? If you're brand new to stenciling, we offload the brush as much as we can before you paint on here because that's the only reason I can do these swirly motions right now is because I've got hardly anything on the brush. So it's better to add a little bit more as you go and or even do a second coat if you need to. But the least amount of paint on your brush is the best for doing this stenciling. And that way you don't get it bleeding underneath. You don't get it bleeding underneath the stencil and creating fuzzy edges on your words. So that's my best tip for stenciling if you're new to stenciling. We do have a whole lot of stenciling videos right here on the Facebook page for Essential Stencil. 
So you just have to go to the video section, you'll see all our lives. Some are even categorized into different um, sections, you know, Christmas themed or holiday themed, seasonal, or there's a one on shadowing. So I do um, shadowing, creating a shadow on your stencils. I've got some lives on that if you haven't seen any of those or if you want a, a refresher, there's a playlist in there called shadowing. <coughs> Okay, I think that is enough for that subtle look. Now if you um, just need somewhere to pop your brush in case I might use that red again, I'll just pop it in a plastic bag. Or you could put it in a wet cloth. So let's see how that turned out. Yeah, that stands out enough to be able to see that. I could have put a pop of colour in the background like a, a, um, a white shadow to make that stand out a bit more. But I think that's cute for a, a rustic farmhouse kind of a look. I will um, wash off my stencil later. Now let's get on to this one. Yeah, cowback. And I think we went, we're going to go with these peonies for the transfer on top here. Spring flowers are cute too. If, if you don't have any of the peonies or the spring flowers, look for them on the website. Okay, so I think I'm looking at this through the video camera to see. I think it needs to go down there. Actually, I'd like the words, they probably do need to be down further away from the face of the cow, at least away from the face, so that they kind of just spread across the bottom here as a fun sign. I don't want to go below there. But just here, I think, is a good spot. We look at the distance either side. Yep, it's around about right. Add a bit of tape here. And I'm going to add this tape where this P comes down closest to this line, just so that I don't accidentally get my brush off on the edge of that. I will be doing that white. Let's have a go at just adding this first. Thank you, Carolyn. So the farmhouse sign looks wonderful. Pop that down here so you can see it while we're working on the cow. All right. Oh, didn't think about this. So, yeah, I think just straight on, just like so. And so you can use transfers on top of transfers. You can layer those and you can use stencils on top of transfers. I'll show you that in a minute. So the transfer does have a slightly glossier than the paint surface, okay? So we may have to go over that stencil with a second coat. We'll just have a look, see how it turns out, um, because some of these areas on the wood are going to soak up the paint a little bit differently than some of these areas that are over this transfer, which does have a bit of a, it's a matte finish, but it's, it's I'm guessing the material is somewhat plasticky so it does resist slightly the paint but the fusion mineral paint sticks to pretty much anything so <laughs> if you're using fusion there's a good chance that it will be that it will be fine especially if you add a second coat okay so i've rubbed that all over with the tool now i'm just slowly bringing this back and just making sure all of the areas are removed Janet's going to tell us why barns were red. I'm going to go and read that in a minute later, after my life. <laughs> that will be interesting. Interesting info. Got a history lesson there. And perhaps it could give me a reason why we don't have them in Australia. I don't know. Our barns were always just whatever colour the wood was. I'm going to hit this with the hairdryer again. Remember if you watched earlier, it did help a little bit with a bit of heat. <coughs> Someone just said they use the back end of the scraper. This one here, this back end. Well, yes, you could use that too. I hadn't used that before. Sometimes I'll even use my thumbnail on little bits that are just, I want to get it even more hard than the others. There's just little bits that are 
coming off here. And sometimes it does depend on um, the weather. I don't know. Yeah, this one's not coming off. Oh, I do like that end of the the end of the transfer tool does have a bit of a bit of strength to it. I must admit. <laughs> Rebecca says, I'm new to this, did not know you could use heat on this. Well, Rebecca, we are just experimenting today. So, you know, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if it's fully working or not. I'm having a little trouble getting this removed from the backing. So we're just trying things. It worked a bit for the cow. Wow, this is really stuck hard, guys. I'm going to have to... I have to move along with something else if this isn't coming off. It feels like there's some bits that are really stubborn. I'm not sure what that is. And um, I do remember someone saying that if they put their um, their transfers in the freezer, it worked better. So yeah, I don't know which works better, but this one is having a real stubborn time of, of coming off. And uh, sometimes it does depend on your surface, but I just did the cow on this same surface. And it worked great. Okay. This back of this tool is actually whoever that was um, that recommended it. I agree. It's like I'm just using this circular motion and it's kind of happening for me. If I go upside down, it's working better. Let's let's have a go at working on this. Give my arm a rest and <laughs> just work on the white of this. I'm going to use Fusion Mineral Paints Victorian Lace. <clears throat> I'll allow that little peony to cool down. And I'm going to use probably this brush. It's a 5 8 inch brush. And um, if you don't already you can grab a couple of sets of brushes because a lot of people have been saying you know once you've got a favorite brush that you tend to use more often than others um, and when you're using different colors it is handy to have a couple of sets if you like that one size okay I've just offloaded a bunch of paint off the brush now I'm going over this with um, a swirling motion and we can always go back over it with a couple of different coats there is a white section of our cow right here. See this whole side is a bit white. So I hope that stands out, but if it doesn't, you can always sort of go around it with a bit of a border. Ah, oh, the back of sheet is taken off. Okay, Marianne's got a good tip there for the transfers if they're not going on properly like you'd like with using the heat. Yeah. I love to experiment with different ideas and I'm so grateful for a lot of you right here in the community that watches our lives that have some great tips of uh, methods that you use for either stenciling or for adding the transfers. <clears throat> okay, so we've got that nice grain of the wood. Oh, I feel like I had too much paint on my brush. I can always tell. I'm like, ah, I had too much on my brush. I feel like those edges are going to be a little fuzzy. Um, those of you who are in the Stencil of the Month Club, know what next week is it's stencil of the month club open week so invite your friends if they're not members to watch next week and uh, it's exciting Melissa Miller shout out to Melissa has designed this next month's stencil of the month and I can't wait for you to see it I love it she will be showing that I guess in the club what are we today Friday <coughs> 
so um, what's the, Friday is the 14th, right? And we usually show it uh, open, the club's open from the 14th to like the 20th each month and for seven days and you can join as members then. So if you're on the waiting list, next week is one to look forward to, to join the Stencil of the Month Club. <clears throat> right now I know that so many of you are excited by the April stencils oh Denise you just joined last month and got your April one that's exciting yes the April stencil of the month that was a nice set okay let me see I'm going to go over this part here because I can see that it just needs an extra, little bit extra coat. And we'll see how this turned out on the, I feel like it's more solid on here than it is out here. We'll see how this white area turned out too. Let's have a look. Ta -da, ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh, I feel like that. I feel like that can, that can work. It's just this E down here, live. The, E on live is a little bit in the white so it's white on white so and then oh no the T is fine it's just that E it sort of has a little bit of white on white so I could even just do a second coat on that word making sure I've lined it up exactly where it was Don't go anywhere because at the end of our live, we're giving away prizes to three lucky winners. <clears throat> okay. And this one down here. So that turned out nicely on the on the transfer. Really it went on well. It's the fusion mineral paint sticks really well to that. So I did do an extra coat on that E and I feel like it's now standing out a little bit more. Guys, let me tackle this little peony. The other idea, instead of a plastic bag, you can leave your um, brushes in a wet cloth if you're going to use them again. I'll wash that off in a minute. Let's see if I can get this open. Oh, I missed, I'm missing some of your questions and comments. So uh, if you leave your questions in there, I will go back in a minute and answer some of those. This is going to make a fool of me, <laughs> this little transfer problem. I might have to try some experimenting on that when I get off the live. Look, it's been a pain. Some little bits that aren't sticking well. It could be the surface, it could be a little bit wet under there still, but the, the cow transfer, or if you, um, sometimes if you have a little bit of grease or moisturizer on your fingers, you know, that, that could be an issue. I'm not saying that that's what is, it is for this case, but you've just got to make sure that your fingers are dry, that you've not got any or that you haven't got any sort of a waxed surface, you wouldn't want to put something on that because that wouldn't work either. See, this end is coming off okay. Well, guys, I might have to put some, go get some ice cubes and put on that. I'll let you know how that goes. But my, let's have a look. Nancy, you always have a hard time. Oh, sometimes it's just really super easy for me. I don't, I don't usually have this much of a hard time. But I feel like there's something going on with the surface here that's not allowing this to go on nicely. And it's kind of creating a bit of a wreck on my beautiful peonies. I don't want them ripped. See, it's coming off nicely there and then it gets stuck. So there's something just in that area that's not wanting to be nice. While I'm doing this, I'm going to get Essential Stencil to pick our winners for today. And if I don't get it off, I want to do, I do want to do some experimenting with a little bit of ice. And you can 
see if I post that later. I'll post it in the Stencil of the Month Club group and on my iRestore Stuff page. So you can follow me on iRestoreStuff.com or it'll be on it'll be at iRestore Stuff on all of the social media channels. You can follow me there. Oh, he's a little bit torn. Yeah, I'm going to go and fix that. <laughs> I'm going to go and fix it. All right, so today so far we have got farmhouse sign with a cow print background. Don't forget to use my code iRestoreStuff, especially on your April bundles that are available now. And I've got them. I'll just get them in the background up here while we have a little look-see. There's our cow, which is still getting his hair done. He's still at the hairdressers, guys. So there's our April um, collection again with the bundle in the background up there on the website. You'll be able to see all of those. I love this rattan print there. You can order singles and they are available right now. You don't even have to pre-order those. They're available now to purchase and they're ready for shipping. So that's awesome. But right now I'm going to jump over to our um, Facebook comments so I can see who's the winner. Let me just go like this and um, see who's winning on our... If you see winners, let me know. And I'm going to go fix our cow and then I'll put a picture of it. I do love that cow though and she looks great with the peonies. She's just got a bit of plastic on there yet. We're doing... Oh, the winners are there. We're doing a bit of... Um, transformation hairdo up here. All right, don't forget my code. And the winners today are Charlotte, Gloria and Denise. Congratulations, you're our winners on today's live. You can email Essential Stencil at the Essential Stencil email address. They've tagged you there in that pinned comment and let them know you were a winner on Sharon's live today. So I am Sharon Hankins from the blog, I Restore Stuff. We'd love to see you again next week or join me over on my page for some fun DIY furniture painting and decor upcycling. Um, awesome. Congratulations winners and we will see you again next week. Bye.